and welcome to the special coverage of the 2018 Inter-Korean Summit Pyongyang. I'm Lee Ji-yoon in Seoul. Today is another big day for the two Koreas as South Korean President Moon Jae-in headed over to Pyongyang this morning, where he and his delegation will be spending three days and two nights in the North Korean capital. President Moon's trip is the first trip by a South Korean leader to the North Korean capital in more than 10 years. And the last time we saw this happening was with late former President Noh Moo-hyun, who visited Pyongyang back in 2007 to meet with then North Korean leader Kim Jong-il. What's even more surprising is that this is the third summit between President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, as the two have already met back in April and May. The summit, under the slogan of peace, a new future, comes at an important time because negotiations between North Korea and the U.S. have sputtered in recent weeks, raising doubts about whether North Korea is truly willing to abandon his nuclear program. The first inter-Korean summit of 2018 on April 27th led the two Koreas to agree on the Panmunjom Declaration and help to reduce war fears on the peninsula. And the second summit, which was held behind closed doors in May, helped President Moon to broker a historic summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump. So now at this third summit with Kim Jong-un, President Moon faces his toughest challenge yet to get something meaningful out of the meeting that goes beyond previous statements on denuclearization and to get North Korea-U.S. talks back on track. So to get us deeper into this summit and what we can expect throughout the day, our foreign ministry correspondent Lee ji joins us in the studio today. Hi, ji -won. Hi, ji Thanks for having me. All right. So let's uh, start by looking at this uh, car parade uh, between uh, President Moon Jae-in and, um, or actually let's start with uh, his arrival at the airport, an international airport in Pyongyang. Now, how was uh, President Moon received uh, by Kim Jong-un there? Yes, ji we weren't sure if uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was going to be at the airport to greet the South Korean first couples, but Kim Jong-un uh, came and he was together with his wife and his younger sister and other high-level of North Korean officials as well. Mm. Now, uh, the first couples of South Korea and North Korea met, and the four of them had big smiles on their faces, and while the first ladies uh, shook their hands, the two North uh, the leaders leaders of South Korea and North Korea hugged each other twice and they also shared a short conversation between the two, um, with other uh, North Korean officials there mm. as well and uh, they, after that they all uh, they got on the car they got onto their cars and it seemed like they got onto their uh, cars Separate separately cars. Mm -hmm. yes but then when we actually saw them arrive at the state house uh, state guest, guest house, house of Baekhwawon, mm -hmm. they uh, the leaders of North Korea and South Korea were together and we could see what happened uh, in the car parade mm, unless we see on the uh, or now that's still at the airport as they're walking down the uh, red carpet there and uh, oh now uh, what's interesting is that this is their third encounter right so I mean it seems like you know they're actually really warm to each other it's a very yes. brotherly hug there yes. and warm smiles and the first ladies of the two Koreas were also exchanging yes. greetings. Yes. So it was a very good uh, thing to see, yes. I guess. And it was really warm welcome from the North Korean people as well. They had the unification flag, the pink flower uh, shrub, mm. and the North Korean flag. And they also had banners that read, uh, we warmly welcome President Moon Jae-in to the north, and some that also read, let's open up a new era of peace and prosperity with the united force of our people. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that we see the unification flag there also. Yes, They're holding yes. that over there. So. Yes. And we know that uh, ceremonial guards also yes. honored uh, President Moon. Yes. So it was a very uh, grandiose uh, entrance. To for tell you President more, uh, yes, uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong Un's younger sister Kim Yo Jong, who also, who, who is also the first vice department director of the Central Committee of the Workers Party of Korea, and Kim Young Chol, who uh, is the vice chairman of the ruling Workers Party Central Committee, mm -hmm. who also doubles as the United Front Department director, uh, they were all there to welcome uh, the South Korean first couple. And as we see there, that's the yes, car yes. parade that we uh, talked about just now. Mm -hmm. that we didn't know that was happening until we had yes. the video come in, right? The video just came in just a few minutes ago, right? Mm. We are just seeing this as we speak. Mm. And we actually saw them 
uh, in the same car, which was a surprise. We yes. didn't expect that. Like you said, we thought they got on uh, separate cars mm -hmm. and headed over to the guest house, but. Well, I had a chance to actually look at uh, look through the clip just before I came in, mm -hmm. and there are thousands of thousands of North Koreans lined up all the way to the state guest house. Well, I don't know until where, but right. uh, it was a long ride, and it seemed like they were there for a really long time. Mm. And just to tell you this, Pyongyang Sunan International Airport is some 22 kilometers away from the central Pyongyang, mm. and it's about a 59, 55 minute ride. Wow. So I am thinking that a lot of North Koreans mm. came out to actually uh, give uh, the South Korean first couple a really warm welcome. Yeah, we, uh, as we saw on the video uh, before I came in the studio too, I saw quite a lot of people, you know, chanting mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know, welcoming the two leaders. And it was a nice scene to see, you know, them getting on the car together mm -hmm. or they're shaking uh, or they're waving their hands mm -hmm. together and as we see there like you said we see so many people yes. out on the streets and they're all wearing the traditional yes. Korean um, attire humble it's really colorful uh -huh. it makes the scene even yeah. better even more so and what's interesting is that uh, seeing how all these North Koreans actually came out on the street to welcome South Korean President Moon Jae-in also tells us that they were formally aware, uh, they were told that uh, mm. the president was going to come. Right. And that's also one point that I want to mention uh, is it's that uh, all North Korean media outlets uh, had reported on South Korean, uh, the summit between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and their North Korean right. leaders uh, back uh, it, back in 2000 and 2007, it, they only reported once the South Korean president land, uh, came into Pyongyang. Mm. So uh, it wasn't. We weren't sure if North Koreans had known about this whole summit before. Mm. But this time, uh, the North Korean media outlets, uh, named, such as the Korean Central News Agency, they had reported on South Korean President Moon Jae-in's arrival early this morning. Mm. So North Koreans already had prior knowledge of this summit happening. And one of the um, statements that uh, they called it, uh, they used to describe the summit mm -hmm. is that uh, the summit comes as part of the implementation of the Panmunjom Declaration, which seeks to achieve peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula, and that the summit is expected to further accelerate improvement in inter-Korean exchanges. Mm -hmm. So as you can see from this parade, all these North Korean people are really cheering for South Korean president's arrival, and hopefully that can uh, further boost these civilian exchanges and the public sentiment between the two Koreas. Right, like you said, I mean, North Korea state media reported on Tuesday calling the summit a good opportunity to improve ties between the two Koreas. So obviously we're going to see, uh, hopefully we'll see that happening. And I mean, since April and May, we have been seeing the two Koreas definitely boost ties in various areas, right? And the two sides have also been holding military talks to reduce tensions. They've also been holding uh, family reunions, right? Yes. And so we've definitely been seeing some progress in inter-Korea ties, but I guess what we did not see much progress in was the nuclear talks, obviously, between yes. Washington and Pyongyang. So that's something that we'll probably have to uh, keep something, our eyes on. Something mm. that we hope to see improved in this uh, uh, summit. Right. So it's a it's beautiful weather there. I mean, as you yeah. can see, and we see people on the the on the, on the roads yes. and wow look look at that wow you see that's incredible and all there the roads are closed for this obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we see them going to the guest house and we know that their summit is going to start at 3 30 p.m mm -hmm. local time yes. right korea time yes that is the first round of summit mm -hmm. the two leaders will have at this uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. And it is significant because the two former uh, inter-Korean summits that have been held in Pyongyang started with a meeting with Kim Young-nam, mm. uh, who was the nominal head of state. Right. So uh, the South Korean president's meeting with North Korean leader didn't happen until later in mm. the day or later during uh, their trip to the north. Right. So it is significant to highlight that the two leaders will be meeting on their first day on and their first meeting and mm. uh, we have dr. Wu Jong up research fellow at the Seju Institute joining us today in the studio thank you so much for coming in my pleasure all right so we're seeing this whole uh, unfolding story 
right, between President Moon Jae-in and uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And now I'm sure you uh, watched President Moon Jae-in's arrival mm -hmm. at the international airport in Pyongyang. Uh, uh, what was your uh, emotions, I guess, uh, with this third encounter between the two leaders? Uh, actually, the first thing that surprised me is that we can we can watch this live mm. uh, because uh, in the in the previous visit uh, we would not be able to see a live feed from North Korea. Right. And I think that that is amazing. That it shows how the relations between two Koreas have improved uh, during the very short amount mm. of time this year. Because we would not be able to expect this kind of like ceremonial meeting until like December last year. Right. So since uh, North Korean uh, delegation's visit to Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games, uh, it moved uh, so fast. Right. So now we have this like ceremonial visit. So now uh, the things that we are going to watch is what kind of deliverables that mm. two leaders are going to show us after the series of meetings during President Moon's visit this time. Mm. So, uh, and like we are seeing in the video, I mean, uh, we saw so many people mm -hmm. out in the streets, mm -hmm. and we didn't know this until later, but supposedly the two leaders of the two Koreas were in the car together, mm -hmm. and they're waving their hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of meaning could that be carrying for all of us watching? It, it, it might be a little bit strange to, I think, Korean watchers, because that uh, I, I remember that when I was very little, like until like early 80s, uh, South Koreans did the same thing when U.S. president right. came to visit to Korea. That some like Koreans were lined along the road oh. while the president, uh, George H.W. George Bush, right. came to visit Seoul. So no nowadays, like South Korea has not done that mm. kind of like welcoming ceremony anymore. but. Considering that North Korea has totally different government system uh, compared to us, that it is how they are going to show us that they are welcoming President Moon this time mm. very uh, gladly mm. uh, in 11 years that since it was 2007 that the last time that South Korean president paid a visit to Pyongyang. So I, I think. Uh, it, it, it looks a little bit strange to us, right. but I, I, I think we should understand that that's their way of showing their uh, welcoming mm -hmm. of our president. No, I think it was the, one of the best ways mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. that they're welcoming the South Korean president. Now, uh, we know that a big delegation actually accompanied uh, President Moon Jae-in this time around, and we saw some North Korean official, top officials uh, uh, greeting them as well. Uh, can you tell us some? Uh, can you tell us more about some of the people that, at, or the delegation that tra is traveling with President Moon to Pyongyang this time around? So, so it, it is. It is typical that government uh, brought together the big government delegations, government officials in related department and the government agencies. Mm. So that that includes Ministry of Foreign Affairs this time, and Ministry of Unification. Right and the national intelligence, and also uh, the government agencies are dealing with the forest mm -hmm. and railroad. And the, but the highlighted part of the delegation this time is uh, uh, so-called like business owners right. of the four major groups in South Korea, uh, which includes uh, SK, uh, Hyundai, LG, and, and Samsung. Mm. Uh, so the, there, there, there's a controversy of some of the uh, business owners this time uh, visiting Pyongyang together with the President Moon. Mm. However, I think that the reason why President Moon and the Blue House decide to uh, bring them together this time is to show to North Korea that uh, th there's a bright future for them if mm. they democratize and they can open to the world economy. And then, like, South Korea is already ready, right. ready to invest if mm. certain conditions are met for the mm. in the future. So I think that uh, not only the cultural part or uh, government part, these business leaders uh, uh, highlighted the delegations of South Korean uh, visit, uh, President Moon's visit this time. Right, close mm. prosperity was something that uh, the two Koreas mm. have been emphasizing on. And we have been seeing, uh, I guess, a lot of meetings in between uh, the officials of South Korea and North Korea in relations to forestry and also, uh, but then there are 
sanctions still, mm -hmm. right, on North Korea. That kind of puts the barrier on those efforts, though. So I, I think the North Korean government and the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, uh, I think, surely understood the limitations of what South Korean businessmen can promise this time. Mm. Because of the, all the sanctions that you just mentioned from the United Nations and also the United States uh, unilaterally, there are limitations that what South Korean government and South Korean business can do uh, mm. with, uh, with uh, North Korea. Mm. So even if North Korean government showed some investment opportunity for uh, South Korean businessmen, uh, they, they cannot promise anything this time. Right. So I, I think that the only thing that they can promise this time is that once certain conditions are met, then they are already ready to invest in North Korea because uh, it's uh, <clears throat> because it's not only beneficial to the people of North Korea, but it would be beneficial for the uh, business as well. Hmm. Now let's go back in time a little bit. Like uh, Tiwon said uh, moments ago, uh, this three-day trip by President Moon follows the footsteps of his predecessors, uh, Kim Dae Jung, in 2000, and uh, late President Noh Mui Hyun in 2007. And how does President Moon's relationship then to Kim Jong-un compare to those uh, relationships, uh, past relationships between uh, President Moon's predecessors and then North Korean leaders? So uh, may maybe the, the biggest difference is that what kind of rapport that President Moon has established with uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un mm. compared to our two previous president's relations, relations with uh, uh, the North, then North Korean right. leader Kim Jong-il at that mm -hmm. time. So the, uh, as Ms. Lee just mentioned briefly about the previous visit by South Korean president to Pyongyang, that uh, when South Korean president landed in Pyongyang, uh, even, even though uh, North Korean, then North Korean leader Kim Jong-il uh, Kim Jong -il welcomed mm -hmm. President Kim Jong-il uh, President Kim Dae-jung, mm -hmm. uh, but the first official meeting was held between our president and their ceremonial leader Kim Young-nam. Mm, right. So they they concerned uh, very much of their own protocols that uh, if you have if you are going to meet our leader, then you have to go through these these steps. Right. But now now the president Moon already met. Uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-il only three times in in right. five five months time mm. span. It's like I've never met my friends three times in five months. Right? <laughs> That's hard, right? Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, it's very uh, unusual, mm -hmm. and it, it shows how much efforts that our government is putting in uh, in this uh, endeavor. So President Moon is now meeting for third time mm -hmm. uh, in five months, and that shows uh, the, the different, uh, different dynamics between the leaders mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, from the previous a visit by South Korean president and now the visit by President Moon. I mean, multiple summits definitely, I feel like, mean more pressure, though, for President Moon. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, like, two previous visits in 2000 and 2007. And also, uh, uh, the President Moon's first uh, summit with uh, Chairman Kim in April 27th, meeting itself is uh, very... Uh, meaningful. Meaningful. Mm -hmm. and. It actually uh, carries very substantive meaning uh, toward the world and the history. So even if we didn't get the detailed uh, agreement uh, from the summit on April 27th, it could be understood because right. it was the meeting uh, from like in 10 years right. because we didn't have uh, good relations with North Korea in mm -hmm. like past nine years. So it was very important that we had a meeting itself. But now uh, we have this uh, third, third meeting. And also from like July, as we all know, that the relationship between the North Korea and the United States uh, has, has been very cold. Mm. So we hope that there has been much progress on the denuclearization front. So we could, uh, we could improve the inter-Korean relations much uh, faster. But this time, without um, much detailed deliverables, uh, there would be some uh, criticisms. So I think our government uh, pretty much knows the situation. Mm -hmm. So that is why uh, President Moon is going to have a talk with uh, Chairman Kim uh, the afternoon on a day that he just arrived in Pyongyang. Right, and he's gonna, it's, it's a three-day uh, trip, right? He's gonna be there for three days, two nights. Now, 
Chiwon, uh, what do we know about the agendas for this week's uh, summit? Sure, Jin. Uh, Presidential Chief of Staff Im jong seok who is also heading the preparatory committee for the summit, said uh, at a press briefing earlier that uh, the agendas include improving and developing inter-Korean relations, uh, mediating and promoting talks between Pyongyang and Washington on denuclearization, mm -hmm. and uh, lastly, uh, reducing military tensions and ending the threat of war. Now, I want to uh, highlight on the denuclearization talks between Pyongyang and Washington, which the South Korean leader is, uh, to which the South Korean leader is playing the role of a, of a mediator. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to tell you briefly about where the talks stand right now, uh, it's at a stalemate, unfortunately. Right. And that happens because the North Korea and the U.S. want two different things, and neither of them is uh, willing to budge uh, or yield in. And what the U.S. wants, as you all know, mm. is the uh, full denuclearization of the North uh, of the Korean Peninsula. What North Korea wants is the security of its regime. Mm. And to start with that, uh, North Korea is asking the U.S. to first declare the end to the Korean War, and the U.S. is asking North Korea to declare the nuclear assets and program it has. Uh, but so their starting points are very mm -hmm. different. That's yes, the yes. big problem here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, and, and I think neither of them is budging right now because they both have different, different definition of what the declaration of the end, uh, end of the Korean War means. So North Korean leader Kim Jong-un told uh, South Korean special envoy uh, in, their, yes, mm -hmm. in their last visit that the uh, declaration to end the Korean War is, uh, only has the diplomatic uh, meaning. It's only a diplomatic declaration which helps uh, Washington and Pyongyang build trust. Mm. But that's not how the U.S. thinks. What the U.S. thinks is that uh, though it may not be legally binding, it could far reaching. Uh, it could have far-reaching repercussions, including the withdrawal of U.N. command and U.S. troops in the South. Mm. So, if that's what U.S. thinks uh, uh, North Korea eventually wants, mm -hmm. it's obviously not going to let that happen until North Korea takes uh, specific and more concrete steps towards denuclearization. And uh, but what North Korean leader Kim Jong Un uh, also said is that declaring an end to the Korean War would not weaken the U.S. and South Korea alliance or lead to the withdrawal of U.S. troops in the South. Mm. But what U.S. consistent uh, constantly and re uh, is repeating is that uh, they will not uh, declare any peace uh, treaty or end to the Korean War unless North Korea takes more concrete actions on on abandoning its nuclear right. weapons. Mm. And, uh, and that's why North Korea and the U.S. are currently at a stalemate. And uh, President Moon's role as a mediator is very important at this yes, time. Yes. And that's why we, say, we said earlier that President Moon faces his toughest challenge yet. And this, uh, hopefully the third time will be the charm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, at this moment in time, it seems that President Moon has a lot on his shoulders because, uh, like we said, they are at a very two different starting points here. Yes, the, the one, thing, one thing though I, I want to uh, point out this time is that even though the denuclearization is very important and we want to hear uh, from uh, Chairman Kim's mouth, <coughs> mouth that uh, he's going to follow this step for the uh, direction of denuclearization mm -hmm. of North Korea, but uh, given that there's a possibility that North Korea and the United States has a second summit very soon. Uh, and President uh, Trump and the State Department already insinuate the possibility. That means that uh, there's less motivation, less incentive for uh, Chairman Kim to talk about uh, denuclearization with our president. Mm. So e even though uh, we, w we, we hope that there is much progress made by our president and Kim Jong Un, mm -hmm. but even if we didn't hear any like concrete message uh, from Kim Jong Un, we, we should not uh, be saying that this this summit is failure. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the part of the process. So we 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 have to see that even if even if we didn't get any concrete message from Kim Jong Un this time, mm -hmm. but this we we have to remember that this is a part of process. So so as long as our president is trying to persuade Kim Jong Un into the right direction, mm -hmm. so Kim Jong Un can meet President Trump again, mm -hmm. and if something good happens there, I I think this summit is still very meaningful. Right, but then I feel like that President Trump uh, he actually has a lot in 
stake right now with the midterm elections in the U.S. coming up and all. So he needs something to show his country that he is doing something mm -hmm. as a peace uh, mediator, I guess, uh, that he's the one who will be able to uh, end uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula. But, you know, I guess uh, things didn't really work out the way that he envisioned uh, after that Singapore summit with uh, uh, Kim Jong-un. But, I mean, I feel like after today's summit, depending on this week's summit uh, between President Moon and Kim Jong-un, uh, I feel like there are chances that uh, President Trump might not meet with uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, depending on what comes out of this uh, week. E even, though, even though it's very difficult for us to expect that there is a concrete message from Kim Jong-un about uh, its nuclear weapons, but uh, I'm almost sure that the Kim Jong-un uh, is not going to say any negative things mm. about the negotiation with the United States on its nuclear weapons. So uh, when uh, Secretary Pompeo uh, canceled uh, his most recent visit right. at the end of August, that there was a concern that North Korea might pull back from the uh, dialogue mm -hmm. with the United States. But uh, with our special envoys visit to Pyongyang, we, we confirmed that North Korea is still interested in uh, having talks with the United States. Right. That means that it's in North Korea's interest to continue to have dialogue with the United States. Mm. That means that uh, North Korean leader is not going to say anything negative. Uh, for the negotiation with the United States. So I think that uh, even if we don't get any concrete positive message, but at the same time, we are not going to get the negative message from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Right, I kind of agree with that because um, in a sense, we know that Moon's special envoy to North Korea, Jong Un, when he was in Pyongyang this month, right? Now, he said that Mr. Kim reaffirmed his commitment to denuclearize. So, uh, you know, in a sense, we're a little bit confused. I mean, where is this going, right? I mean, he's saying he's willing to denuclearize. He even mentioned a timeline we heard from uh, our special envoy that Mr. Kim uh, plans to, you know, go ahead with this denuclearization process before uh, Trump's first term ends, right? So this was the first time that North Korea has actually put forth a timeline as well, which uh, kind of raised hopes that perhaps things will get back on track. Mm -hmm. But obviously, uh, Mr. Moon, our president, has a lot on his shoulders, and it, it, we a, a lot of eyes are on what's going to come out. Mm -hmm. Although you said uh, that, Dr. Wu, you said that you don't expect anything concrete to come out this time, meaning that perhaps you're expecting something vague mm -hmm. to come out than just specific detailed uh, measures, I guess? Uh, s since uh, our special envoy briefed the media and the public that uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un mentioned that he's willing to denuclearize uh, by the end of President Trump's first term, mm -hmm. which is the end of like 2020. Right. So uh, maybe uh, this time there's a possibility that Kim Jong-un publicly confirmed that message. Mm. So uh, that, that's, that's, that's a good sign that North Korean leader mentioned the, mentioned the timeline of denuclearization by himself. Mm -hmm. But the remaining question is how to achieve it. Okay. So probably we are not going to hear about that how part, but uh, since he already mentioned the 2020 uh, through our special envoy already, mm. I think there is a possibility that uh, he could he can mention uh, that timeline again with uh, President Moon in this visit. All right, Chuan, uh, kind of shifting away our focus a little bit. Um, can you tell us more about the schedule for? Uh, Others during the first round of the summit involving our first ladies, business members, special entourage. Sure. Uh, so, like you said a while ago, uh, the first round of summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong Un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in uh, for this round of summit will begin later uh, in the afternoon uh, today at 3:30, mm -hmm. and will last until about 5 p.m. Right. And while that is happening, the first ladies of the two Koreas will be spending some time together. Okay. Now, they met for the first time back in April. Uh, that's when the Panmunjom Declaration mm -hmm. was signed. But it wasn't long. It was only three hours as it was right after the declaration was signed and during the whole dinner uh, 
uh, uh, farewell event. Mm. And uh, while that was also significant, their meeting in North Korea is also significant as it is the first time the first ladies of the two Koreas will be meeting in the North. Mm. Now, uh, former first ladies of South Korea also visited the North, uh, namely our uh, Lee Hee-ho, who is the wife to the late uh, President Kim Dae-jung, and Kwon Yang-suk, uh, who is the wife uh, to the late President Do Mu-yeon. Mm. Uh, they also uh, they went to the North with their husbands in 2000 and 2007, respectively. But as uh, Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, never really disclosed his wife uh, public right. in public, uh, the meeting between the first ladies never actually happened. Mm. And to briefly tell you about where these former t uh, first ladies went, they went to kindergarten in Pyongyang, and they also met with female representatives okay. and visited Korean Central History Museum and the Grand People Study House. Mm. And Yi Hee Ho, for, uh, first lady Yi Hee Ho, even met her high school math teacher who uh, was living in Pyongyang. Oh, so is that, that right? Was, yes, mm. that was something very interesting. Mm. But this time, I think we're going to have a, a schedule that's even more interesting because uh, the South Korean uh, First Lady will be accompanied by the North Korean First Lady. Right. And we have uh, a number of places that they will be visiting. One of, the, one of them is the Ongnu Children's Hospital, which okay. was built in 2013 and it caters specifically to children and nursing mothers. Mm. And uh, it is one of the hospitals in the north with uh, the best technolo uh, technology and the high, uh, uh, best facilities. And using those uh, facilities, such as the web cameras, the doctors at the Ongnu Children's Hospital even teach doctors in other hospitals, hospitals. around North mm. Korea. So it's one of the uh, best hospitals North Korea have mm. has. And Another place the two first ladies will be visiting is the Pyongyang University of Dance and Music. Okay. Now, this is a significant, I, I think this place holds even more meaning to both uh, first ladies as mm -hmm. they have a common denominator of music. Uh, our first lady, the South Korean first lady, Kim Jong Suk, she majored in vocal music. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, North Korean for, uh, first lady, Lee Seo Ju, she was a singer before she right. met North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. And even at the Panmunjom uh, summit, when the two met, they shared this interest in music and cultural events, and actually said uh, to further that they will work on uh, work to boost cultural exchanges between the two Koreas. Mm. And so they will be visiting this Pyongyang University of Dance and Music. And to tell you more about this place, it's a uh, performing arts university founded in July 1972, okay. uh, as you can you know from its name mm -hmm. uh, and it has departments such as national instrumental music modern instrumental music vocal music and even dance and composition mm -hmm. and uh, 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 one funny thing about this uh, university is that one of the renowned alumni of this university is the famous pianist Kim Cho-rung, who is defected to the South in 2002 mm. to have the freedom of playing a wider range of music. Okay. So it's uh, one of the significant places that North Korea has. Yes. Mm. Now, ever since we've been seeing a diplomatic thaw between the two Koreas, like you said culture has played an important role between the two Koreas and we've obviously been seeing uh, many cultural exchanges uh, between the two sides and we know uh, part of the delegation from South Korea includes uh, some musicians, right? Yes, uh, mm. th those uh, musicians include Ailey, mm. a pop, uh, singer, a famous sing female singer in South Korea, mm. Zico, a very hot and well-renowned mm. um, rapper, rapper in South Korea, mm. who, is who also doubles as a idol group, mm. uh, one of the members of the idol group. And uh, this comes as South Korea uh, already sent, uh, South Korea and North Korea uh, already held a uh, concert right. uh, earlier in the year. Mm, yes. In North Korea, right? Yes, yes. yes. It, uh, was one, uh, it, it was one where a lot of South Korean artists participated, mm -hmm. including ballad singers and, and, and very uh, uh, sing and idol groups that... Right, Red know, Velvet, I believe, too, yes, right? Yes. yes, They had very mm -hmm. uh, exciting dance mm -hmm. yes, moves. And, mm -hmm. Right, definitely culture plays an important role in that sense. But um, tell us more about, uh, I guess, economic exchanges, Chiwon. I mean, sure. what is this uh, new economic map of the Korean Peninsula? 
So the new economic map of the Korean Peninsula was unveiled last year uh, uh, in December, and it was when South Korea and North Korea still had frosty relations. So considering how uh, President Moon even thought of uh, opening a new economic uh, map with North Korea back then mm. is something that we, uh, we, we should really uh, uh, think highly of because mm. he's actually achieving stuff that he's uh, been planning for the two Koreas. Mm. And uh, what this map uh, of the Korean Peninsula seeks to do is to restore economic connections severed by national division mm -hmm. and to narrow the economic uh, gap between South and North Korea mm. and form an economic community on the Korean Peninsula. Mm. And these include include uh, building three economic belts, uh, such as the energy resource belt in, in, in the East Sea, mm -hmm. the industry logistics and distribution transportation belt in the West Sea, mm -hmm. and the environment tourism belt at the demilitarized zone. Okay. Now, I mean, this all sounds very uh, encouraging, but at the same time, we, again, we go back to sanctions on North Korea, right? Yes. Uh, um, I don't... Uh, what the, uh, there's actually been a response from the State Department on these economic representatives visiting North Korea. Mm. According to uh, what VOA reported earlier, um, they, they said when, when they asked the State Department to give a uh, comment on uh, how South Korean leader is taking these business leaders to the north, mm. uh, the State Department said that they expect all member states to fully implement UN sanctions including sectoral goods banned under UN Security Council resolution mm -hmm. and that they expect all nations to take the responsibilities seriously to help and end uh, North Korea's illegal nuclear and missile program. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, some critics say that this might be a warning that uh, the U.S. Uh, is uh, telling South Korea that they shouldn't go too far, far. with their mm -hmm. uh, economic exchanges with the North. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like a professor said a while ago, uh, we don't necessarily have to take look at this in a negative uh, aspect. Mm -hmm. it, this could also work as a leverage to actually further push North Korea to denuclearize yeah. and, and take concrete steps that U.S. President Donald Trump actually wants. Mm. Now, President Moon, before leaving for Pyongyang today, uh, told his aides that his trip to North Korea would have a great meaning if it could lead to the resumption of North Korea-U.S. dialogue. So what can we make of this, and would we see our president accomplish what he said? So uh, th there was uh, much higher expectations before April summit and even for the, the July 12th uh, summit between United States and North Korea. And there's a higher like, anticipation that we, are, we, would, uh, able, we would be able to observe some big deals mm. between countries. And after the special envoy's visit uh, weeks ago, that there was also growing uh, expectation within South Korea that uh, this time President Moon probably able to get some definitive answer uh, from Chairman Kim Jong-un about its nuclear weapons. Mm. Uh, so it, it, we, we still hope that our president can get some answer from uh, North Korean leader, but uh, it, 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 it is not that likely mm -hmm. that we are going to have definite answer. Mm -hmm. And President Moon probably aware of mm -hmm. the kind of expectations. Okay. So that is why President Moon mentioned that uh, we would not be able to get a definitive answer from Chairman Kim, but mm -hmm. it would be very meaningful if we could lead uh, Chairman Kim to have much sincere talk with the President Trump uh, later on, mm. uh, probably within a very near future. Okay. Uh, so I think that is the purpose of what he mentioned uh, before mm. he left. So after this inter-Korean summit, this third inter-Korean summit, is it possible that we'll see uh, resumed exchanges between the U.S. and North Korea? Because like you said before, uh, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was supposed to visit Pyongyang, but President Trump canceled that trip, right? So uh, th there's uh, like, like two forces within the United States actually uh, colliding each other this time, I guess. That like uh, working group officials, uh, State Department and the uh, de Department of like Defense, mm. they had a very strong skepticism on uh, North Korea's commitment to denuclearization. Uh, since the July's uh, visit, uh, which uh, did not uh, yield any like success mm. uh, from U.S. standard, that uh, there was a strong 
uh, skepticism and the frustration are prevailing within the like working groups uh, within the United States. Mm. So they didn't have much high, much like expectation out of a summit between two Koreas, and there's uh, no real hope uh, for resuming the talks between United States and and mm. North Korea. Uh, however, uh, President Trump had like tweeted. A uh, couple times that uh, he would have talked with uh, Chairman Kim, and uh, he sent a message to Chairman Kim directly that they could achieve something uh, together. Right, and he also Trump <coughs> also received a, a positive quote, right. a warm letter from Mr. Kim too. Right. So whenever a uh, North Korean uh, send a message criticizing U.S. approach to North Korea, they didn't uh, include. Uh, President Trump for their target of criticisms. Mm. They already uh, say that uh, they had a belief or trust in President Trump. So I think uh, both leaders of United States and North Korea has very much interested in resuming talks. Mm. So uh, we don't know yet uh, how the, the discussions within the U.S. government is going to make uh, what kind of conclusions. But I think that President Trump has a uh, a uh, very strong uh, willingness to meet uh, Chairman Kim again, mm. and he wants to do that uh, very soon. All right, aside from uh, the U.S. and North Korea talks ever since the April uh, 27th summit, we did see a lot of changes on the Korean peninsula when it came to inter-Korea exchanges and inter-Korea ties. Can you tell us more about them? So uh, we, we have a series of like high-level talks and we have uh, military talks, mm -hmm. and also we have a uh, number of uh, working level talks, uh, including uh, issues of like forestry, railroad, and also the like humanitarian aids. So, we, we, all, all those kind, uh, all those kind of things will not be able to be imagined until last year. Right. So, uh, from the from the April, summit, April 27 summit this year, there has been very fast, uh, fast move uh, between uh, two Koreas. So if, even though all the issues that are pending on Korean Peninsula has not been resolved yet, mm. but the series of meetings is a part of process right. to, to go to the like, final destination. Mm. Right? So I think that these kinds of uh, relations a much, much warmer relations than before uh, is not the end of the process, mm. but it's the part of it's, it's ongoing process of improving the relations. So I think that uh, President Moon and the preparation committee mentioned that the inter-Korean relations, North Korea's nuclear weapons, and the military tensions, all those things uh, are being discussed, but we would not be able to get like final uh, mm -hmm. definitive answer this time. Right, because they want to kind of tell us that this is an ongoing process mm -hmm. and that the two Koreas are just starting to normalize their ties, right? I mean, right. like you said, we've seen some rapid thaw between the two Koreas uh, since the start of this year with the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics and mm -hmm. on. And we saw the two Koreas participating in various international uh, right. games right. together, right, in Asian games and such. So I think in that sense, we saw a lot of progress in inter-Korea ties and this summit. And obviously, today's uh, welcoming of President Moon by North Korea shows how much uh, the ties have improved. Mm -hmm. Because just last year, we were worrying of a possible war mm -hmm. on the Korean Peninsula as Trump and Kim Jong-un were trading threats of war, right? right? So in that sense, compared to that, I think we've come pretty far in that sense. Yes, yeah, there, there, there's a hope that to have much more improved relations, there's uh, like obstacles that we, we have to overcome, which is uh, the nuclear weapon issue of North Korea. So uh, we, we hope that, that there is much, uh, there's also like faster resolution of mm -hmm. that issue as well. But, but we, we have to see how far uh, two, two leaders of Korea can move on on the issues. All right. Now, coming back to today, I mean, after the first round of summit today, which is going to, again, start at 3.30 p.m. around then, 
and then end around 5 p.m. Korea time. And then I think to one, I think you told us that the group is uh, going to watch a performance afterwards yes. too. Yep. Yes. Uh, the group is going, uh, we were told that the group is going to be watching a cultural performance. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't yet know what it is, but to tell you what uh, the former presidents watched at, uh, in North mm -hmm. Korea, uh, the former late president Kim Dae-jung uh, during his visit to the North in 2000 watched a traditional dance performance at the Mansure Art Theater uh, on his day one. Mm. And no, late President Do Mu Hyun, uh, he watched the Arirang Mass game at the Nungnado May Day Stadium back in 2007 mm. on his day two. And while we are not, not sure what the South Korean first couple will be watching during their uh, visit today, mm. uh, we are thinking that it might not be something too sensitive, uh, something that promotes propaganda and something that's uh, promoting the different ideological uh, uh, Mm -hmm. the, I the different ideology they have right uh, but one of the uh, so we're not sure uh, which band it is but mm. uh, there are speculations that it might be Moranbong uh, Moranbong band or okay. the Samjiyeon mm -hmm. band and to tell you more about this Moranbong band it's an all-female music group from North Korea obviously and it is popular for its sensuous performances this band makes use of synthesizers, the electric guitars, strobe lights, and uh, other electric instruments on stage. Mm. And they also uh, wear short skirts uh, and tight clothes, which is something that you don't uh, normally see in North Korea right. as they're very conservative. Mm -hmm. And they are known to be one of the most popular and iconic propaganda band in North Korea. But like I said a while ago, I'm not sure if uh, the South Korean uh, delegates will be watching their mm. performance. And the Samjian band is another uh, famous performing group in North Korea. They consist of 50 to 60 members, mainly mm -hmm. playing classical instruments. And uh, they, a, a different formation of them, the Samjian Orchestra, actually visited South Korea earlier this year, I believe. Mm. Uh, they were here uh, in, in Pyeongchang for the uh, performance uh, just before the Olympics kicked right. off. And that also uh, led to a, a lot of international attention in in South Korea as it is something that you know that it's not something that happens every day mm. and so uh, we're thinking that uh, the South Korean delegates uh, might be watching either one of those bands uh, for today's uh, per cultural performance all right now we know that they are going to hold the summit at around 3.30 p.m. and what we see on the video right now uh, is the guest house, right? Is that the, the, with where the two leaders are going to meet and discuss. Now what's interesting though is that President Moon is going to be heading over to the UN General Assembly mm -hmm. after uh, this meeting with uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and we know that US President Donald Trump is going to be there and we know a representative from North Korea is also going there right so uh, what can we expect over there I mean especially I mean looking at the timing of that right it comes right after the third inter-Korean summit so. so so the General Assembly itself is not about the like, security issues security issues are solely dealt by the Security Council mm -hmm. of the United Nations but uh, many leaders of the international countries uh, took advantage of like giving speech at the General Assembly so uh, this time, uh, uh, report sa reports uh, said that the North Korean uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Lee Yong-ho, was scheduled to give a speech. But uh, if something uh, happens, that uh, the, the speaker can be changed. Okay. And uh, I, I'm not sure whether our president or our foreign minister is going to make a speech well, there. President Moon is supposedly oh, making okay. a speech there. So then. Yes then President Moon is going to tell the, the international leaders that uh, this is how far we, we have achieved mm. uh, with regard to the international relations okay. and there's a progress in the nuclearization of North Korea. So I think that uh, with uh, the possible outcome from mm. the, this summit, President Moon Jae-in is going to tell the tell the world leaders as well as uh, President Trump. Mm. So there might be something that cannot be made public this time mm. uh, 
on what uh, Chairman Kim mentioned uh, to our president, but there should be certainly, I guess, there's a message from Kim Jong-un to President Trump. All right, there are expectations for some sideline meetings there, right? Uh, I'm guessing that President Moon Jae-in is going to be a popular uh, mm -hmm. you know, counterpart to have a bilateral meeting with, yes. Mm. All right, now um, looking ahead, you talked about how you talked about how uh, President Moon is likely to, you know, play the, continue to play this mediating role, right? As uh, we're trying to achieve lasting peace on the Korean Peninsula. So, uh, what are some of the expectations that we have for our president as a, a, a mediator? I guess to mediate well, in your opinions. So since, uh, since there is a, a limit that what our president can use as a leverage to North Korea, because uh, North Korea is already under hard sanction, harsh mm. sanctions, that uh, South Korean government uh, is not like literally provide almost nothing mm -hmm. toward North Korea. So there is like almost nothing that we can use as a leverage toward North Korea. Mm -hmm. So only leverage that we can use is that what we can do if North Korea is denuclearized. Mm -hmm. So I think that with that, President Moon Jae-in will be trying to persuade North Korea leader Kim Jong-un that since we all know that uh, Kim Jong-un is very much interested in improving its ec economic conditions. So President Moon uh, is going to say, uh, Chairman Kim, that uh, without lifting sanctions, that there is no way the South Korean government can provide mm. a meaningful substances to North Korea. Mm. So I think that uh, even though we don't have any like tangible leverages at, at this moment, but that's how he's going to uh, uh, persuade a uh, chairman Kim. All right. Now, as we saw on the video, just it, it just passed by, but and we know that the venue for their summit is going to be at Pekawan, right? So, uh, tell us more about this guest house. I guess this sure, venue. Sure. sure. Um, so uh, the Moon uh, Moon Jae in and his uh, delegates will be staying at this guest house uh, for this summit, and it's also where the two former South Korean presidents stayed during their uh, summit in North Korea, mm. and it's also where U.S. Secretary of Mike Pompeo stayed in July okay. when he came here for uh, I believe it, it was right after it, I believe it was right after the June 12th summit. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is one of the best, uh, it's the best one that North Korea has to present to its foreign guests. Mm. And I guess uh, Moon Jae-in, President Moon Jae-in will be having uh, a good three days here. All yes. right, with his delegates mm -hmm. there, right? Yes. All right, well, that's all the time we have for you guys. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank, Thank you. you.